Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yep, it's still afternoon. Hello, guys. How are you? You are live in the safe zone, and I am your therapist queen. Just wanted to jump on today, say hi to everybody. Happy holidays. Hope everyone had a, a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. We all have something to be thankful for, but truly every day is a day of Thanksgiving for me. And everything we do, we give thanks. Today I just kind of wanted to jump on a little bit for uh, not long, maybe about 15 minutes or so, to talk about something very, very important. It's a, you know, it's, it, it really goes in hand with the holidays and what we got going on. Um, for Thanksgiving and then we got the Christmas holidays coming up and um, one thing I want to talk about today is recognizing suicidal behaviors this is a subject I know most people don't want to talk about um, however it's a subject that needs to be talked about it needs to be talked about Especially around these holidays, people are going through things, you know, people are suffering from depression, people are suffering from uh, mental illness, substance abuse, uh, in abusive relationships, dealing with chronic illness, terminal illness, you name it. So, I want to kind of talk about recognizing suicidal behaviors so you will kind of be uh, educated a little bit on what to look for. Because you never know when you may come across someone, a family member, a friend, you know, anybody that may be suffering from suicidal ideations, which is suicidal thoughts. So just kind of want to do a little education or psychoeducation on suicide and then get into some of these recognizing some of the signs. Okay. Um, suicide is death by self-inflicted injury with the intent to die. Death by self-inflicted injury with the intent to die. That means this person that 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 uh, attempts suicide or you know commits suicide, their intention is to die. Their intention is to die. Okay. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the United States. One person died by suicide about every eleven minutes in the United States. Think about that just for a second. Every 11 minutes, somebody dies by death from suicide. It's the second leading cause of death among people that are ages 10 to 34. 10 years old. Yes, as young as 10 years old to 34 years old. And the fourth leading cause among ages 34 to 54. And the fifth leading cause ages 45 to 54. Just think about those statistics, y'all. Every 11 minutes, somebody dies by death or suicide. Groups of people with the highest rates of suicide include American Indian, non-white Hispanics, veterans, rural dwellers, young people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, um, a few situations and risk factors that lead someone to even consider committing suicide. Uh, they've attempted before, had several attempts before, has a mental condition such as, such as depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, those types of mental disorders, long-term pain, people that suffer from terminal illnesses. Those are illnesses, of course, that we know that they're not going to get any better and that they know that the prognosis is not good and they're probably going to die from that illness. Even the ones that suffer from chronic pain consider suicide because they just can't deal with the pain anymore. Even if it's not a terminal illness and they got a whole lot of pain going on, they just, the only way they feel that they can get out is by killing themselves. Um, money problems, legal problems. Legal problems and money problems is probably one of the biggest ones. You know, I've, I've read where people go to the casino, spend all their money, you know, gamble the houses away, gamble the bank accounts away, the cars away, the kids' college tuition funds away. And the only way that they feel like they can escape 
is by taking their own life because now they can't deal with the consequences behind going to the casino and spending all of their life savings and feel like they can't come back from that. Um, violent and impulsive behaviors. People that have violent and impulsive behaviors, especially impulsive behaviors, that's another situational or risk factor. Um, alcohol abusers, substance abusers, you know, people that have easy access to weapons, guns, knives, those particular things. These are all people that are at risk from even considering suicide. Um, people that are like in abusive relationships. That's a big one as well. Uh, divorce breakups, long-term relationships, you know, the possibility of getting a divorce. That's another risk factor that might have someone considering to kill themselves. People that are being bullied. We read about that all the time. We hear about it all the time, especially with students in school. They can get bullied and bullied and bullied and bullied so much until the only thing they feel like they can do is commit suicide or take their own lives. Um, some community factors that play a part in suicide. Um, people that are ashamed to ask for help. They don't want to ask anybody for help. You know, they don't want to ask anybody for help. They have limited or no access at all to health care. That, that's another community factor that contributes to the suicide rate. They can't get the health care. They can't afford the health care. They're not even afforded, you know, the opportunity to get any health care. Some warning signs and common signs to look for that can, you know, that you, I guess it's like, okay, if you can notice these symptoms and these signs, you might can help somebody and prevent them, you know, from even wanting to even consider taking their lives. If you can catch it early, um, being sad, watch out for people that say it all the time or moody all the time. You know, of course, just because a person is sad and just because a person has up and down moods does not moves does not, you know, necessarily mean that they're considering suicide. But this is like a pattern. And then if it's like an abnormal pattern, then you want to watch out for that. Being sad, being moody all the time. Or you want to look out for somebody that's suddenly calm. I'm talking just suddenly calm. You know, it's kind of like an eerie feeling you get or like the calm before the storm. Those type people. If they're unusually calm, uh, calm or eerily calm, then you want to watch out for that because that's another, that could be another sign. Um, withdrawing from others. Don't want to be around anybody. All of a sudden, want to go self-isolate. That's another sign that you want to watch out for. They want, they go into like this brown recluse, this, rec, not brown recluse, this recluse mode where they don't want to be around anybody. That's what you want to look for. Um, changes in personality. Changes in appearance. Things of that nature. You want to look out for that as well. Because if all of a sudden somebody normally keeps themselves up and you start noticing that their appearance is going down, 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 their personality has changed from one extreme to the next, you want to look out for that. Now, some people's appearances just change, you know, for whatever reason. A lot of people's personalities can change, too, for whatever reason. But these are patterns, again, that we're looking for. These are patterns that you're looking for. Showing dangers of wanting to self-harm themselves, self-mutilators, self-cutters. Those are the people that self-harm because they feel like it gives them an outlet. They say it makes them feel good. They say it makes them feel better. But you want to watch those people, you know, that can be categorized as self-mutilators. Because somewhere along the line in there, those people also got some suicidal tendencies going on. Especially, ooh, especially if they are cutting on themselves. You want to watch that. Because most times, not all times, but most times, that normally turns into suicidal behavior. So you want to watch that if you know a family member, a friend, somebody close to you, 
are self-mutilators, self-harmers is what we call them. Cutting on themselves with blades and different things like that. You really want to pay attention to that. That's a huge warning sign, okay? Um, anybody that has experienced any recent trauma, they have to be monitored closely. They have to be watched closely because that also can lead to suicidal behaviors, suicidal thoughts. People that's just in despair, hopeless, you know, when you look at them, you just feel like it's just, that's just, they just, they don't have any hope at all. Always in despair. That's another thing you want to watch out for. You know, you want to just watch out for, you know, people that's kind of talking about, hey, it's, I'm hopeless, I'm helpless, I don't have any, you know, anybody, you know, they just in, in complete despair. You want to, you want to watch out for those, okay? Uh, and then the biggest thing is when you see people making preparations, that's another thing. If you see somebody preparing then nine times out of ten, that person have made their mind up. They got a plan. They just you, waiting on the, the perfect time to carry out their plan. So you want to watch that as well, okay? And then the ones that threaten suicide talks of wanting to die. I'm going to kill myself, you know, if this don't happen. I'm going to kill myself. You know, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. When they start talking about it, you want to pay attention to it. You definitely want to pay attention to it. Because a lot of times we sit back and we'll say, they're not going to do anything. You know, you know they're always talking about, you know, doing something to themselves. You have to pay attention every single time when a person tells you that they want to kill themselves. You have to treat it as if you know and believe that they are going to actually do it. That they are going to actually do it. Always pay attention. Always address it. Because you never know when it might be that particular time. Even if they've said it a thousand times and did never do it. A thousand times. You want to take that serious. You want to try to get that person some help. You want to try to get that person evaluated. Because you never know when they might actually say, I'm going to do it today. And today is the day that I'm going to do it. One of the biggest questions we get asked in therapy is, can suicide be prevented? And in most cases, and in many cases, it can, you know, by learning risk factors, like what we're doing today, like this video. I don't care if one person see it, that one person need to hear, you know, that these are the risk factors, these are the warning signs. And I know some people are going to catch the playback. You know, it's, a, it's an odd time of the day. 317, that's fine too. Like I said, this platform was not built, you know, for views and all of that. I mean, of course I want the views because I want the people to get the information. I want everybody to hear it. I want everybody to know. I want everybody to be educated, you know. But the platform is for awareness. I'm an advocate of mental health. And that's what the platform is for. So, um, learning the risk factors can help prevent suicide. Be alert to signs of depression. Depression is the main thing. If a person is going through a deep, dark depression, then nine times out of ten, that person has thought about killing themselves at some particular time. So please, please, please be alert to the people that's going through depression. Depression is the main thing, okay? Recognizing suicide warning signs. That can help prevent suicide. Provide caring and support. When you provide support for a person, that speaks volumes to that particular individual that's going through. If that person has a strong support system and somebody that care enough to get them help, that, that's everything. That's everything. And I know everybody don't have a support system. Everybody don't have somebody in their corner that cares about what happened. And that's so unfortunate. But if you do got a support system and somebody that cares about you, that's, that speaks volumes for that person that needs that particular support. And also the last thing, ask them if they are considering hurting themselves. That's one of the biggest things you want to do. Ask people if they are considering hurting themselves. 
And if a person tells you, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm if I'm if I'm gonna do it. I don't know. Take it serious if they say they don't know. If you can't get an absolute positive no, I'm not thinking about harming myself. When you ask a person or if you sus suspecting or if you're talking to them, always take it serious. Cause it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to be safe than sorry when you're dealing with a person that's going through something and considering killing themselves because of what they're going through. Okay. If you have a support system and access to mental health services, you are less likely to act on any suicidal impulses. That's what I was just saying. Support, support, support. Access to the mental health systems. Access to mental health clinics. You know, access to any health care system. You know, that helps. That helps a lot. What to do? If talking about suicide, take them seriously, as I've said a hundred times probably in this live. Get them the help that they need. You know, if extremely depressed, don't leave them alone. Never, ever, ever leave an extremely depressed person alone. Because in their minds, and if they come contemplating suicide or thinking about killing themselves because they're going through something that's so, so horrific or something that's so, so traumatic or chronic pain, you know, an illness that they know they can't come back from. These people are severely, severely, severely depressed. And you should never, ever leave a depressed person alone. Never leave a depressed person alone. Especially if that person has had suicidal attempts in the past or talked about suicide, had suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations. Never leave that person alone. Never. Get that person the help that they need because technically when a person tell you that they are uh, contemplating suicide or thinking about suicide, you know, or having suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations, nine times out of ten, that person is reaching out for help. Nine times out of ten, that person want to be stopped. Nine times out of ten, they just need somebody to say, look, let's talk about it. What's going on? What's wrong? You know, a listening ear. And then following all of that, getting that person the help that they absolutely positively need. Nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten. If you're suicidal or have been suicidal or know someone that has been suicidal or is suicidal, like right now, Know that help is available 24-7. Help is available 24-7. And that's important. 24-7. That means 24 hours in the day, all through the night, help is available. You know, call your mental health clinic in your area. Um, go to the emergency room in your area. Call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That's national. That's all over the world. 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-TALK. That's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Always keep that number near. Always keep it dear. Keep it close. Because you never, ever, ever, ever in this life know when you might need that number. For you, yourself, somebody close to you, your loved ones, family members, friends, you never know. You know. Contact your local crisis intervention team. Most police departments got a crisis intervention team that specializes in dealing with people with mental illness, suicides, all of that type of thing. These are specially trained crisis officers that know exactly what to do with people that are suffering from mental disorders, mental breakdowns, nervous breakdowns, you know, suicidal thoughts. They know exactly what to do. Call your local mobile crisis. 
I'm sure every county got a mobile crisis. I know here in the city of Memphis, you know, the, the mobile crisis, 544-7400. Call them. They will send somebody out to assess and evaluate. And if need to be transported to the hospital, the crisis is dead bad, and you're at threat of harming yourself, or at threat of harming uh, other people, they're going to transport you to the crisis stabilization unit. So these are all the steps that you take if you're suicidal or if you know somebody that's suicidal. Again, contact your mental health center. Go to the emergency room. Call your primary care doctor. Call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-TALK. Contact your local CIT, Crisis Intervention Team at the police department, or contact your local mobile crisis unit. And if you got a case manager, contact your case manager. Those are the things you do. You know, if you know somebody is suicidal, if you're suicidal, you know, if you're help dealing with a suicidal friend, family member, whichever it may be, you know. I just wanted to, to come in and talk about that for a little while, you know. It's like I said in the beginning of the live, it's the holidays. People are going through, you know, not everybody is happy. Not everybody is, is you know, got family members to, 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 to be around during this time and friends to be around during this time. You know, everybody's not in a good place, so to speak. And I just thought, you know, this would be a good time to talk about suicide, suicide um, behaviors, Warning signs, things to look for, you know, just so you can be a little educated. So you can be a little educated on suicide and what happens. It's not something that we sit up and talk about every day. It's not a, it's not a happy subject, but we have to be educated. Because this is very, very real. Every, as I said in the beginning of this live, 11 minutes, somebody dies by death from suicide. That's a lot of people. And that's just in the United States. That's a lot of people. So I just kind of wanted to do a little uh, suicide awareness. Do a little. coming on because I hadn't been on in, in a good little while. I think it's been probably over a week since I came on and did a live here in the safe zone, but been on vacation all week. It's winding down, so I thought the last day I might just come on and do a little, little talk, and you know, God put it on my spirit to do this anyway. This is not what I was going to do and talk about, but when, uh, you know, spirit talks, I listen, so that's how I came up with suicidal behaviors, recognizing suicidal behaviors. And that, my friends in the safe zone, I think will conclude this live video. Hopefully, you know, others will tune in on the playback and 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 and, and get to see the live and get to get the necessary information and kind of, you know, get a little educated on this suicide prevent, well, not prevention, but awareness thing. I'm a suicide prevention. That's a laugh for a whole nother day. Cause that's, you know, something maybe a little different than what I'm doing today. But, um, as the Holy spirit, you know, see fit, I'll cover different topics at different times. So, um, that's what I had came on today to do. For those that did tune in, I know it was uh, just a few that I could see, but thank you for the little time that you spent with your therapist queen today. And uh, I will see you guys again. Hopefully in the next couple of days, I am going to be covering bipolar and schizophrenia. Hadn't forgot about y'all. It's just been a... Woo, a busy week, but I am going to come back. I don't know if it's going to be a live or just a video, but I am going to cover um, paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar. And I got to go back, y'all, and, and, and get um, anxiety and got to go back and get uh, understanding. I mean, what mental health really looks like. I have not done that one. I know. I haven't forgot. But uh, 
I will. I will. I'll get to it. We don't have nothing but time on this platform. Nothing but time. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And I will see you guys in the next live or the next video. This is your therapist, Queen. And I am signing off. Everybody have a blessed day. And oh, yes, remember, I have to say this. Everything I discuss in these live videos is for educational purposes only and not for any type of diagnosing or anything of that matter. Please see your primary care doctor or your psychologist or your psychiatrist or your own personal therapist if need be. Okay, just have to get that little disclaimer in here. Educational, informational purposes only. Okay, guys. All right, y'all have a good day and be blessed.